Mission accomplished, challenge completed. North Carolina, switched over to my mesh and my uh, USA glove. Pastrami? No. Pepperoni. Like I'm a, I'm a gynecologist uh, bed. South Carolina, very close to Georgia. Let's clean up these freeloaders. Follow these tips for an easy saddle sore. It was nice, it was fun. Tell you the truth, it was a little bit, it was somewhat easy for me. Tell you how you can do this iron butt challenge easy. Now, who am I to give you tips about your iron butt challenge? Well, this certificate, the official IBA certificate and documentation of completing the iron butt challenge. And this is actually a very cool license plate holder that I got, patch that I don't wear and stickers. So yeah, I'm authorized to tell you, right? I'm sure that if you follow these tips or most of them, your iron butt saddle sore will be much easier than what you think. Gas station selection. Two types of typical gas stations. The smaller ones, family owned, very few pumps and limited times of operation. The bigger stations have a lot of pumps, have always gas 24 seven usually. Big problem with the big stations is midday and on usually the pumps run out of your receipt. So bear in mind, they're always open, but halfway through your challenge, you'll probably need to go into the station itself to get your copy of receipt. Still in Virginia, the, the machine didn't give me a receipt, so I had to run inside to get a receipt. Well, I hope, hope I won't be facing any more of these. What did I tell you that the last one, I won't have a, a receipt as well. Let me show you what you do. You go inside, simply ask, don't move your bike leave it so nobody else comes and does a transaction and ask for a receipt on that pump. Hi, good evening. Hi. Could I have a receipt for a number one, please? For the show. Yes. More than half of them uh, didn't have receipts. I had to go into the, into the counter, into the store itself to get a receipt. On the spot, there was no problem. They gave me the receipt, but I had to wait online uh, one or two times. I think it's the fact that the bigger, bigger, bigger gas stations, midday already, they run out of, uh, you know, paper, in the, and nobody goes out to change the paper, so that you just need to go in. I, I would say that actually the smaller gas stations would probably have uh, receipts, receipt paper during the the whole day. So when the bigger ones that I was at today, they're the ones that didn't have the receipts, the paper. Bring your own food. Don't rely on gas stations and food stop areas. That's time consuming. You have to get your food, pay. Sometimes there's a line. You're wasting precious time. Get your food ready in advance a day before. Got a little cheeseburg cheeseburger burrito from Trader Joe's. Gonna fart a lot on the way, on the road. Day before, have your own food. I took a little cooler with me, popped in some sandwiches, beverages, snacks, and on the go while you're riding can actually eat. Don't waste precious time waiting to pay for your Diet Coke. Make sure to have a gas fill plan. Think about it, 1,000 miles will take you on average 10 gas stops. Each gas stop, if you're very efficient, from the minute you leave the highway till the minute you enter back to the highways will take you at least 10 minutes with the receipt and documentation and everything. 10 stops, 10 minutes, that's 100 minutes gone. That's an hour and 40 out of your 24 hours that you need wasted on gas. So make sure to make that stop very efficient and plan in advance. Know in advance how many miles you can get on a fuel tank. Take 20% less off of that. My bike would do 200 miles. I planned every 160 miles a gas stop. My starting point, I drew down along my route 160 miles and looked for a cluster of gas stations near that area. And then another 160 miles after that. Created five or six di uh, different must stop points, which uh, are the refueling points. I can do about 180, 190, maybe 200. I don't even, I don't really know. It's my first long trip on the bike. It's always good to stop uh, to have a, like a fuel stop plan in advance so you don't try to figure out where you need to stop to look at your odometer and whatever. If you have a plan uh, in advance, you know pretty much where are the areas where you're gonna be stopping. Day of choice. What I mean is what date you're gonna actually go, what time of the year, 
what season, obviously matter to the weather that's prevailing, if it's cold or hot, if there's a full moon or not, when you're going at night. I'm very fortunate. There's this, there's the moon, almost full moon, just a few days after full moon. The night, the sky is, is bright, relatively speaking. So it's not pitch black. Weekday or weekend, there are advantages for this and for that. Weekends, great for less traffic and open roads. Weekdays, you're gonna hit a lot of traffic and slow down your whole trip. It's early, not many cars on the, on the roads, which is perfect, that's what I was aiming for. And it's a Sunday, hopefully I'll avoid a lot of Sunday traffic, like uh, midweek traffic, I mean. GPS. Obviously weather, very important for temperatures and for rain. You wanna avoid rain as much as possible. Choose a dry day, your saddle sore will be so much easier. I chose the right day. I literally waited to see when uh, the coast, the east coast was gonna be clear of rain. Uh, so I expect minimal amount of rain. And I was blessed because uh, I aimed for Sunday. It, would, it showed just slight rain down in Florida. And I said, I planned everything for this Sunday. Got my rain gear just in case. And I was blessed because uh, up till now, knock on wood, I didn't get uh, any rain whatsoever. Temperatures were, were okay, were cold, coolish, okay, in the morning. And now they're gonna get a little bit cooler. Midday, they were warm. So it's definitely important to, to plan your departure day, to plan uh, your, your iron butt challenge when the uh, weather is good. Time of ride. You can start your 24 hours at eight o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning. That's pretty much the time you're gonna end your ride. Highly suggested what I did. I started three o'clock in the morning, first three to four hours. You're very fresh, not tired, less traffic on the, on the roads. You can get cover a lot of miles initially. Three o'clock in the morning, highly recommended. Morning, three, 3.15, 40 minutes in. These are the hours that, are, that excite me because I got a very good rest last night. Roads are clear. Weather is not too cold. It's good. Enjoying the roads. I'm still pumped up, excited. I don't want to say adrenaline. I'd like to say excitement uh, for the journey. If you start at three o'clock in the morning and you do as planned, you'll probably end up 11 o'clock at night and you never ride in those tired hours. Two types of travel. You can do a circle challenge where you end up at the same point you started, or you can do a destination like I did. Started in North New Jersey and ended up uh, in Daytona. Personally, I think that when you're going on a destination trip, it's gonna be much easier, mentally much easier, because there's a purpose for your ride besides the challenge itself. When you're doing a circle, you're ending up at the same place. This whole trip is just about the challenge. But when you're going on a destination, you're gonna do something at the end of your trip. I went to Daytona visiting my parents down in Florida. So mentally, it's a much easier ride. I'm going to visit my parents and they're a thousand miles away from me. They're a thousand, two, uh, thousand two hundred miles away from, the, from me. So I said, you know what? Let me do it as I'm riding to them. That will be my challenge. Just, just to do the challenge for the sake of the challenge. Personally, I don't, uh, I don't I don't see the purpose when you have a purpose for you know for the actual ride itself it's so much easier it's it's so much easier when you're you actually going somewhere you it's not just riding for the sake of riding because you know the riding itself is I can't say it's extremely enjoyable you, you're under stress you're you can't rest uh, where, where would you like to you're under a you're like under a time, a time frame or under a time limit. Every stop you have to say, okay, five, 10 minutes. You can't really enjoy. So you pretty much, you're, str you're stuck and you, you have to adhere to a certain schedule and the ride itself is not, not really enjoyable. Break and rest management. Obviously when you're starting fresh, you need less rest. So try to cover as many miles you can. Second part of the trip, when your body starts to get tired, you're mentally tired, fatigue kicks in, sometimes even headaches. 
that's when you want to uh, make more frequent stops and longer rest times while you're stopping what i did initially is first two fuel tanks i didn't stop i stopped only on the second fuel tank for a rest for a 10 minute rest i did that twice and i covered uh, a significant amount of miles first stop first gas stop two and a half hours straight no stopping it was okay well once you're into three four five hundred miles in already that's when you want to stop every fuel tank stop and rest for 10 minutes and at the end of the ride it's night it's dark already that's when you literally want to stop every 40 minutes put a stopwatch put a timer every 40 minutes stop and rest for 10 maybe even 15 minutes Fast access items. Make sure to always have within reach while you're riding a hydration, water, Coke, whatever. If you have a cup holder, perfect. People, some people use a camelback with a straw. Food, so you can literally, while you're riding, grab some snacks, a sandwich, whatever. And also, first aid kit. What I mean is Tylenol, if you need. Got two more hours to go. I had a, a very strong headache before. And, uh, I took two Tylenols and that relieved. Now I'm uh, much, much better. And uh, also remember the the acid reflux, like you know, the, the heartburn that I got this morning. And it came back later on today. So thankfully I had the thumbs. I mean the Tums. <laughs> I had the Tums with me. So definitely be prepared with uh, things on the go that would be you know near you nearby my thumbs were over here literally in this cubby and so are the Tylenols so when you're preparing for the ride make sure the th uh, to have the things that you need that you don't go need no, that you don't need to go digging for for example sunglasses once the sun is out, uh, out once the sun rises and it's in your face you have sunglasses to put on immediately or take off a bottle of water near you all the things that you think you might need make that handy so you can avoid stopping just for uh, food water and uh, Tylenol initial rest is most important if you're gonna leave 3 o'clock in the morning make sure to hit the bed uh, the night before 9 o'clock in the evening 9 to 5 you sleep you get a good rest gonna make your ride really easy initial rest is key Cloth selection. If you're going to be riding from a cold uh, environment to a warm environment, make sure to have cold and warm clothes with you. I had, uh, for the Northeast where I started, I had my Beyond Riders flannel jacket and then long cargo pants uh, from Beyond Riders. I knew that up north, back north, I'll be cold. That's why I took uh, my Beyond Riders flannel. But once I hit South Carolina and headed towards Florida, that's where I switched over to my mesh. Got the mesh. It's way more, more breathable, obviously. Huh? But it also has the, the Kevlar and the impact areas. So I got a lot of air, a lot of uh, ventilation. Same thing with the gloves. I had winter gloves on uh, when I started. And halfway through, I already switched over to my uh, gloves that were switched over to my mesh and my uh, USA gloves. Way more ventilated. Make sure to have good cloth selection. You ne you can never overpack on these rides. Helmet. What helmet should you take? Personally, I think the best helmet is a modular helmet. I did not have a modular. I literally took two helmets with me, a full face and a three quarters, and I wound up using the full face the whole ride. I actually never drank this coffee. Like I, I brought with me two helmets thinking, oh yeah, I'll bring, I have a, a three quarter helmet over here in the back. I thought to myself, once I get down south, I'll put the helmet on three quarters and I'll be able to drink and do stuff. But first of all, I have the camera over here. Second, you know, it's just comfortable with the full face. So never drank this coffee, just uh, at, at the house. The advantage actually for a modular is you get the wind protection, the noise protection, uh, you know, for cold temperatures and the noise itself. And whenever you want to drink or just refresh yourself in stops or as you're riding, flip it over, drink, eat, get some fresh air and then close it down. Wear a modular. Early start. I can't emphasize that strongly enough. 
best hours in my opinion to start are early morning. You're fresh, you got a good night's sleep, not a lot of people on the road, and you can hit 300, 400 miles on the first, uh, first part of uh, your journey when you're really energetic, adrenaline is in, early start is key. Morning, three, 315, just had my full initial fueling, which uh, the point where I started, I, uh, it's early, not many cars on the, on the roads, which is perfect, that's what I was aiming for, and it's a Sunday, hope. Just stopped in Maryland, first stop, first gas, stop uh, two and a half hours straight no stopping it was okay uh, weather is really good bike is running beautifully if you wait till eight nine o'clock in the morning that's when you hit the traffic commuter traffic a lot of cars on the road everything starts low you're off for a, a very difficult start start early bike selection if you have more than one bike i highly recommend that you choose your bike that is most comfortable for long distances think of noise protection think of how loud the bike is how smooth the bike is obviously when it's loud when it's shaky and with lots of vibration and very poor wind protection you get fatigue very early during the ride makes life very difficult i have three bikes 350 was irrelevant i had the lowrider st the V-Twin, and I have the Honda Goldwing. Obviously the Goldwing is more comfortable for long distances. It's quieter, it's smoother, and better wind protection. You wanna be as comfortable as possible. Backrest, remember, if you have cruise control, that is your number one choice. You're gonna get tired, put on cruise control, relax your bodies, your shoulders, everything. Stand on your pegs. If your bike uh, has mid controls and you can stand on your pegs, Highly recommended. You can avoid a lot of stops for no reason, just while you're riding. Stand on your pegs, stretch, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, let that blood flow all around, get some fresh air above your uh, windshield. If you, every once in a while, if you need to stretch your legs or to, you know, relieve your position of your legs, just drop, drop the speed a little bit. Drop the speed a little bit. And if you have a bike, there you go. If you have a bike that you can stand on the pegs, just do that. And shake your legs a little bit. Because, you know, every time you stop, get off the bike, start it, or whatever, that eats up a lot of time, a lot of time. So every once in a while, you know, if you want to just change a position, just relax a little bit, just do that, stand up. I did that a lot on my ride and I avoided a lot of stops just, you know, just for resting to stretch out. Avoid the dark hours. Obviously the dark hours are the, uh, the hours when you're tired, other drivers and riders around you are tired, trucks are out, heavy traffic, visibility is very bad, and most important, animals are out. Very dangerous, try to avoid the dark uh, hours. That's what scares me the most. In terms of animals, animals running, you can't really see them. People, uh, drive, other drivers, that's uh, the time of the day when their body starts to shut down. Naturally, the cycle, the body cycle, the sleep cycle kicks in around 10, 11 o'clock at night till 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they get really, really tired. So those are, those are the hours that you want to avoid. You also get very tired at those hours. You might fall asleep on the wheel or on the handlebars. So definitely try to manage your time to be off the road, off the streets, between, I would say, 10 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Those are the circadian uh, cycle of our body that we're, that's where we're supposed to be sleeping. And that's where our body naturally is tired and trying to get into its sleep and uh, energy recovery uh, cycle. Plan extra miles. If the challenge is 1,000 miles, make sure when you're planning to get above 1,050 miles and higher, 
because many times your odometer is lying and so is the Google app that you're uh, using or the Google, the Google Maps or the app that you're using to plan your ride. It might be uh, off a little bit and the IBA, the Iron Butt Association, is very strict on that. So make sure you have uh, some extra miles on your ride. I actually added an extra stop after I documented everything, my final stop. I went another 10 miles just to make sure that I have that extra miles. Service that you can when you plan the trip. Make sure you get some spare time in because you never know how uh, you know how they calculate it and stuff like that. So I started at home, home to Daytona is 10,000, I mean is 1,040 miles. So that should be a good uh, reserve that I have. Make sure you don't you don't cut it short do the whole trip and then you miss it by one or two miles when they try to certify it for you it's miles south of where I uh, did my last fuel but I'm gonna go to another fuel uh, you know a fuel station over here refuel just for the sake of to have those extra five six miles in case somebody over there who makes a decision whether you did uh, you certified it properly or not so I'm just gonna clock in, uh, add that fuel in as well. Oops, wrong place. Entertainment is key. You gotta have your radio set up and ready, whether if it's on your bike itself or uh, in your helmet, because boy, 12, 24 hours on a bike, that can be really mentally tiring. I'm at 850 miles. It's getting kind of boring, but what I'm actually doing right now is I'm listening. My phone is connected to my uh, uh, com, uh, com system, and I'm li listening to an audiobook. Believe it or not, it's an audiobook about YouTube, creating good content on YouTube. Yep. <laughs> so, time is not, I'm not wasting any time. Avoid distractions. You're target focused. You're on a mission, you wanna get those thousand miles. Suddenly you see an interesting gas station that you've heard of, just in, like in my case, Bucky's. I've never been to Bucky's. I came across it for the first time. I said to myself, maybe I'll stop and, you know, I'll look around, take a little uh, video for my, uh, for my subscribers. Big mistake, don't do that. I avoided that. Stop for a little protein, protein snack, like cheese crackers, almonds, and pastrami, no, pepperoni, it's at Florence, Bucky's, I'm not gonna go in because it's a time-consuming thing and I'm under a schedule, on the way back, I'll make an effort to come here, but I'm gonna drive through it right now so you see, what I did is on my way back, I actually stopped there, stay focused, target-oriented, avoid distractions, and get those miles in. That's it. I'm sure that if you follow these tips or most of them, your iron butt saddle sore will be much easier than what you think. That's it guys. Hope you enjoy this and learn something. Go out and do your iron butt challenge. I'm sure you'll find it easier than you actually think. I'm Sandy. You're watching Holy Shift. Till the next video guys. Peace out.